Insiders, welcome to another edition of the Priceless Update Summary Video. Uh, you've got Wadley here, you've got Harrison here, and it is July. Uh, we have 40 new line items to explore. That 40 line items added to the Xactimate Priceless in July of 2020. Uh, Wadley, I know there's some here in here that you're pretty excited about because we've been thinking about or looking at these for a while. We've got some updates to older line items to look at, and there are some exciting line items ahead. Uh, but in the meantime, let's jump right into Concrete Grimy. This is something that you and I have talked about. We've created line items before uh, in, uh, on our own in the past. So what, what is this? Why, how is it intended to be used? All right, let me first say, yes, I'm pumped up. Dude, we have a lot of line items to get to today. Uh, a lot of changes and we're trying to constrain this for you guys like great feedback on the videos but like we're trying to make them as short as possible but sometimes it's really difficult uh to unpack these with any level reasonable level of detail without getting underneath the hood and it takes a little bit of time to do so but to that end i will try to get to the point guys uh and make sure that we can quickly communicate all of these new material updates to the price list. Concrete grinding. Okay, never as a GC have I ever removed glue down wood flooring and a mitigation environment and not had to diamond grind before putting down uh, engineered wood flooring on the repair side. And there was uh, consistently kind of this, um, I don't know, difficulty and how do we transition what's incorporated you see it in one of my favorite insight sheets that we wrote in 2017 which was glue down flooring the one that we updated with the new ppe line items to account for diamond grinding but there is no line item right what do we use like uh fcw misc for yes. it yes. right and so you and i when we publish these curate these we really try to stay away from labor hours and we try to stay away from misc or heaven forbid bid items, right? But in that particular case, uh, we just didn't know otherwise what to do, but we knew the, the, uh, that function had to take place, so on. So this is great, man. I think for carriers, contractors, the world over, so much less arguments are gonna emerge in the years to come. So great addition to the price list. I see it under FC, FNC, concrete grinding. Here's an, I don't think that's going to be used that often. Like, I, I, what is the scenario? We read it. FCW. No, no, no. I'm talking about the CNC yeah, category. Uh, I don't, I don't see the concrete one being used that often, right? Well, so, I mean, it, it is related to a concrete mason labor in general. Yeah, I mean, but it's going to be a flooring guy that's going to do it as as it relates to restoration or flooring gal. I would see it as more typical. Here's my warning, okay? This is a great addition for uh, the restorers so they can include a line item. It, you know, it pays uh, reasonably. Uh, no one's getting rich on that particular function, but don't use the, the F N C line item unless CNC. it's really CNC. the C N C unless it's, you know, really like outside the scope of flooring. If it, it all relates to flooring, which it, it often would, FCW that's tied to that trade code and the associated supporting event is a better play. The yields, the direct yields are identical. The only delta there is the cost of the trade code and then your supporting events as they impact the delta between your direct yield and your yield. So FCW is probably gonna be the one that's used 90% of the time. So pumped to see that one. Yeah, the only thing I want to add to that is actually that uh, as part of that glue down engineered wood flooring insight sheet, our Xactimate invoicing template that you were talking about, yeah. we added repair uh, PPEs on the repair side due to silica uh, and OSHA regulations around silica exposure. Right. So note that this is an activity that may likely uh, kick up some silica in the process and protect- I couldn't think of anything that would make silica more friable, right? It's right. super- dusty when you're concrete grinding and I've never seen a machine that's able to do that in a dustless manner. Yes. So that makes sense, which is why we chose to include PPEs on the repair. Out of all of our repair inside sheets, none of them include PPEs because we understand that that's a bit spicy and uh, actionable is not aggressive in our publications. So we'll try to come down the middle, but we did incorporate it in that particular sense because we think it's prudent to do so. Concrete grinding kicks up a incredible amount of silica dust and it's prudent that we're 
protecting our guys in the field. So it's a great addition. Anything else you want to add to that one? No, no, okay. I think that's a, that's, a, that's a good example. All right. Uh, let's jump into the shower pan here. We've got two new line items around shower pan. And in our preparation, we added two more that we wanted to kind of discuss and analyze. But specifically, what was added in July 2020 is a shower pan drain only and a shower pan over 16 square foot liner only per square foot. Why don't you bold line items three and four so we can clarify what are actually our, our two new line items here. Yep. Uh, all right, so shower pan drain only. When we wrote the insight sheet, also published in 2017 for high grade shower surround with mortar bed, we included that line item, which is waterproof membrane uh, tile ailment. And then we included the shower drain for use with waterproof membranes. Significant delta in price here between the new sh um, shower pan drain only and uh, the waterproof membrane. And when you pull up the components build up, Harrison, what, what are the deltas there as, as it relates to the, the equipment between the shower pan drain only and the waterproof membrane drain only? Got it. All right. Let's take a look here. Components for material on the new line item, drain only, is a shower drain with a PVC base. Okay. Uh, down here. $29. Another one up. Nope. One up. Yep. That one. This is the drain with the grate. Got it. Okay. So, yeah, a grate assembly is not that common. Pull up it. There you go. Perfect. Uh, this is what a great assembly traditionally would look like to me. If you feel differently, guys, give some insight down below. Uh, but a, a traditional cheap, like builder's grade drain pan, 30 bucks from Lowe's, right? That, that seems to make sense. The new line item, you know, affording $130, this thing to the right, this is the price structure where you get north of a hundred bucks. I think this is the Delta between the two. So, um, you know, as excited as I am about these new line items, dude, your team has like 50 hours of work between these two insight sheets to update the insight sheet, the macros, the as seen and exact, all the additional item information. Good luck with Thanks, that. Uh, uh, you got some work to do because I think that we now need to replace the waterproof membrane with great and then put the waterproof membrane line item as situationally relevant because it's more obscure. I mean, that's why these line items were added in general, right? To kind of be more specific in that there's now a drain only line item and then the shower pan over 16 square foot line item. Yep. Or, you know, an easier way you could do it, you could include this new shower pan drying item and say, this is more common. And we call out that the, uh, that's the line item that actually would uh, be used if you incorporated uh, a great, but we'll let the board decide what they want to do. All right. So can we move forward on to line item four there, the shower pan? Yeah. All right. So this liner. So when we did this high grade shower surround mortar bed inside sheet, what we chose to do is use the line item uh, T-I-L-S-W-S, uh, T-R-T-I-L-S-W-R-P-M, right? Yeah, that waterproof, waterproof membrane. membrane. And what we, we, we did and stated, see how it's illustrated in the schematic you pulled up? This is perfect. You see how it goes from the right side, the tile curb, comes down, right, around the drain assembly, and then goes right back up the wall. Sometimes you can use the same waterproof membrane to capture the area uh, around the drain assembly. And sometimes you might want to use uh, a different liner and then tie them in together. A lot of times you'll, you'll pull it maybe six inches up the wall, and then you'll like tie them together. Uh, this is really gets down to the fact that tradesmen for showers, they all do it a bit differently. Your plumbers do it a little bit differently, especially your tile installers waterproof a little bit differently. And it gets kind of nuanced folks because with this new liner line item, how does that relate to a hot mop? Is it mutually exclusive? If we're gonna hot mop and we're gonna get hot asphalt in there, do we still need a liner? Uh, don't we? I, I can tell you that there is no absolute right answer to that uh, with some degree of confidence, folks. For some <laughs> uh, builders, they will use the hot mopping and then they'll still line it. And some will depend exclusively on the hot map and the uh, hot mop and the associated mortar bread. So I don't think it's going to be unactionable to take a hard position there. I'd say the one thing that I'm, I'm also very uncertain about, and why don't you add it to our next call? 
why is this new line item for shower pan say over 16 square feet, right? Typically when we see over, under, and a defined square footage within the description of the line item, it's then the unit is a unit of one, right? In this particular case, the unit is square feet. So, uh, and there is no shower pan liner under 16 square feet. You might see a delta in price the same way that they do for you know, a tile shower surround under 100 square feet or over 125 square feet. I think there's three different tiers. That makes sense. Economies of scale, they're trying to recognize. I don't understand the, the over 16 feet distinction. I think you could use this line item on a common 36 by 36, so nine square feet install, and it would work. So I don't understand exactly why the 16. You, do you have any idea, Harrison? I don't exactly. I think you said a 36, uh, which would be six... Uh, six times six, not nine by nine, so I wanted to clarify that. Got you. Um, the uh, the 16 square foot. Hold on, I can't let this go. So 36 inches by 36 inches is how many square feet? Oh, three by three. That's nine. Yeah, yeah there you go. Okay. Woo! I, My state school I education. I like it. Right, I Ivy League. Near the square inches. I heard square feet. I'm like, how'd you get that? Okay. Right. inches there yeah i know it's our awesome imperial system it just is poised for confusion when are we going to move to metric that's a that's a initiative actionable insights would be key that's a good mind. one i don't know why the 16 square foot is there but one thing that you and i talk about and i think what the pricing department is at least getting to is the economies of scale in exact me and so it's recognizing that over 16 square feet there's a certain economies of scale that exist, and this would be the pricing around that associated activity. So uh, hopefully we'll get some clarification. As you said, we'll add it to our next call with the exact where pricing department so that we can get some more information and provide it in our August update. But yeah, I mean, I'm just glad to see these exist and uh, that, that they're a warranted addition. You know and what we should do? We should do a flashback at the end of each one of these so we can go back and clarify. So flashback to last month. Um, okay. I love it when you hit me with a new idea in the middle of a recording. <laughs> Bro, I just, that's, they just flow like that, right? If I don't spit it out and you don't write it down, it's never going to happen. Like it just kind of comes in this ear out the other. All right, what do we got now? We're going to have to brand that flashback, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, blasting exposed framing with sheathing. So in May of 2020, I'm going to scroll down on the right side here. We got some new line items when it came to HEPA vacuuming, specifically HMR and WTR for HEPA vacuuming exposed framing with sheathing. Right. And so along these lines, I think uh, it might have been in April-ish, these new dry ice, expo uh, dry ice exposed framing uh, line items came out, soda blasting as well. And so the uh, pricing department has gone ahead and said, you know what, the, that was a, a noble way to address exposed framing with sheathing when it came to HEPA vacuuming. Let's right. apply those same ideas and principles to dry ice blasting and soda blasting. And hence, here we have you know, about seven to eight new line items when it comes to soda blasting or dry ice blasting, exposed framing, lift sheathing for either floors or walls per square foot. Right. Um, is, is HMR warranted WTR? I don't know. We'll let you guys sort it out. Yeah. At least we're getting closer. Uh, awesome addition. Here's why. When you are doing HEPA vacuuming or when you're doing dry ice blasting, it is more common than not, in my estimation, that there is sheathing. And sometimes folks confuse sheathing with like a shear wall where you'd have maybe on one of the garage walls that adjoins to the house. That would be true. That would be sheathing. However, think about if you've got a fire and you've uh, dropped the lid, so you've removed the drywall, removed the installation, and you're dry ice blasting, you're doing that against the sheathing of the plywood that's the underlayment for the second floor of the property, right? So the, you, the only time you wouldn't have that is if, like if you were blowing into an attic or something of that nature. But uh, so many homes now, especially the newer homes, are two-story. Um, sheathing is going to be super commonly used for HEPA vacuuming, dry ice, and soda blasting. My bias is dry ice blasting. As a restorer, uh, always have had better luck with it or actually really no experience with soda. If you like soda, tell me why, because I don't understand why you would use soda blasting. I'd love to learn something. So Yeah, would you ask the audience, if you like soda, tell me why? I, mm -hmm. I wanted to add the word, if you like soda blasting. Blasting. Yeah, just let them know. Blast, blast off. Blast off. All right. Uh, sectional overhead door. Last uh, month, we saw a bunch of, of roll-up doors and hardwares of different sizes. A lot of these line items, uh, not these particular sizes existed. Yeah. 
but line items for roll of doors or line items for sectional right. overhead doors existed before this. But now we have uh, a various amount of sizing options, insulation options that have been added to the price list. Yeah, I think this is great. You know, having some forklifts, how many times has that happened out of the uh, the Yarrow office, like we've done that. We've three times our guys have driven through our overhead doors. Even within a similarly specced door, the price structure for the doors that we could select for by gauge varies greatly. Uh, you're talking the difference of maybe 200% difference. So it's great that now there's all these new options between insulated and the size of the doors. Uh, why do you suppose all of these new overhead door additions in 2020? It's been There's a weird year. Been a significant amount of property damage in the last month or two. And so I think uh, these are providing restorers and carriers, adjusters and estimators working together the opportunity to settle those claims a little bit more efficiently when finally there's a line item that reflects the real life scenario of what they're trying to figure out how to, how to invoice for. What Harrison is trying to say is uh, we suppose the pricing department has had a, to set up a riot response team that has been putting forth line items for glass work and for overhead doors at a maddening rate so to their credit um these are probably helping a lot of these folks and I've, we've seen it out on exactimate ninjas right all these ias getting all these riot claims and so on this is probably really helping because i don't think anybody really knows how to price an overhead door like do ias know that i mean not even restores it's such an obscure thing for yeah, our it, industry it's the so, classic bid item response right when yeah knows, right knows. But this is like thumbs up, man. I think they've been working overtime to pump these out. That's where you see the pricing department really showing that they, they care about restorers and carries ability to settle claims swiftly and nobly. Why else would you work to adopt, you know, 40 new line items for overhead doors, uh, you know, over the course of three months. So yeah. these are great additions. And All right. the, the quick uh, additions of face shields and face masks, right? As yeah. COVID-19 started. So yeah, continued props to the pricing department for adding timely line items to related to current events. Oh, we got COVID. Oh, we got riots. Okay, here we go. Right, there's some new ones. <laughs> Nurse call station. This one was a new one for you and I to, to look at. Uh, these are simply stations uh, for calling nurses. So yeah. there's a bunch of new uh, line items here in likely commercial settings that are available. Uh, mailboxes as well. You got some plastic, some high grade plastic, a rural mailbox that's plastic, a wall mail, uh, mailbox that's plastic. As you can see, the common denominator here being plastic mailboxes uh, are, are out there in the world being affected. And then is there some, like a, is there a city mailbox versus the rural mail? Is there an urban mailbox, a high density mailbox? Urban mailbox plastic? I don't know. I'll have to, <laughs> I'll have to check. I'll, I did not. I did not dive into that one. Pretty before. granular. I don't know the backstory on that one, but okay, sure. Uh, and then we've got some new cleaning goods line items, right? We, we get some new cleaning line items almost every month. So I've, I've put them here, uh, a wood bench and a okay. two tree rack organizer. Uh, I got some heavy cleans, some light cleans and some normal cleans. So all there. That's okay. it. That's the 40 line items for July that have been added to the price list. Now, as we know, it's not just adding new line items to the price list every month. Xactimate makes changes to the existing line items, modifications to yield, text descriptions, what's included, not included. So let's jump to this uh, line item changes here. What I'm gonna do is bring this over to the right. And I've got here on the left, June. So oh, for perfect. those that are looking at the new screens here, I've got a June estimate with the June 2020 price list for San Diego, mm -hmm. California on my left. And on the right, I've got a July estimate with a July 2020 price list for San Diego on my right. Uh, let's take a look at some of these. I'll bring up here when you roll down, you know, there were some, oh, no, no, got to go up to July. Here we go. We talk about the price list items modified. Just to say it out loud, they added a text description that the cup bend line items are for cleaning a plastic and vinyl bench. Additionally, the other one I'm going to just, you know, gloss over. The ELS ICNM line item was specifically pointed out to be a commercial grade. And so that's the kind of small changes. Let's jump into the actual estimates here uh, where I've, I've got some bigger changes. There, we've got some yield changes from June to July. So looking at 
Um, these overhead sectional doors, right? These are existing line items, not new, yeah. uh, that were added to the price list. And you can kind of see uh, some of the overhead door installer yield change, specifically if I were to hit yet edit and edit. The yield used to be 0.3. You could install 0.3 of a, what, what is this, a 14 by 10 sectional door, yep. almost a third of it in an hour. Now it's saying a little bit less, 0.275. So you can see a slight difference here in the direct yields from June to July, saying that it's a little bit harder to install these 10 by 14 doors, uh, 14 by 10 doors than they were before. And additionally, the material went up by $9. So that's another interesting uh, application of the pricing department making updates to these components and what's in these line items. Right, and so as the yield goes down, the price is goes up ever so slightly. And you see these yield adjustments all the time when they're adding a number of different new line items that are all related. And I, I don't know if they're really like changing the labor rate as much as they've had, they probably use averages, right? But as they come up with more acute line items to define, you know, certain sizes that, that acutely, then they, they are just going to make some warranted adjustments to yield. Makes sense. All right. What else you got? Uh, we have, Two line items here. So remember, if there are brand new line items when it comes to dry ice blasting and soda blasting of exposed yep. framing with sheathing. So they went back to the older exposed framing line items, no sheathing, and kind of updated the yields to determine very, very explicitly that now you have with sheathing line items and these are the no sheathing line items. And this so is exactly what I'm talking about, right? So because the sheathing line items are more expensive, right, because you're going to be doing the sheathing and the two by fours, then they would um, you know, increase the yield for the non-sheathing line items. Totally makes sense. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, is there. Then we've got some siding hardboard. They mentioned some yield changes. There are, are, are minimal, uh, but I will open up the components here for a moment and take a look at this. Oh, yeah. Uh, it looks like there was a, an addition so they added siding joint flashing to the mm -hmm. line item in the component buildup. A new material component has been added to the siding hardboard. Uh, so some definite changes in the components buildups there. Now let's jump into some additional item information change. This is a big one. Um, dry LF and associated line items, dry patch J, not associated line <laughs> item. I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> Those line items are used a lot in claim settlement. In fact, dry LF might be one of the most frequently commonly used line items other than WTR, DRY, right? You've got the repair most common line item and you've got probably the mitigation most common line item. Right. Uh, specifically, they've added into the, uh, let me go to the item image here and click this. Let us take a look right here and see what, the, what they've added. Uh, do, 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 do. Note, at the very end of this paragraph, there's a new sentence with all capital letters. <laughs> um, <laughs> this item is not intended to be used in conjunction with the dry patch LF or dry patch J items for the same repair. And so, you know, there are square footage line items when it comes to drywall and there are linear footage line items when it comes to drywall. And what is included in those linear foot line items is different. And so what the exact where pricing department has identified is some of that tension between contractors and care and carriers, specifically, you know, estimators and adjusters trying to negotiate around drywall replacement uh, and, and trying to identify that, hey, dry patch J is a supplementary line item for square footage applications. But it is explicitly not to be included because that dry patch J tape and everything is already included in the linear foot line items. So essentially, if you are invoicing dry LF to replace a flood cut and then trying to do a perimeter floor, a PF of the dry patch J around it, you are double dipping because the dry LF line item already included uh, that dry patch J tape joint for new to existing drywall. So I, what, what, do you, what do you, I mean, they have dry LF, dry LF 5 eighths, dry patch J. Uh, I mean, they've, they've hit every category they can here to very explicitly explain that, that these are, uh, you know, here's the dry patch J note. It is not intended to, <laughs> oh, they got two knots. Not intended to be used to dry LF line items, not intended to be used to dry patch line item. So, I mean, they're, 
They're being very. Uh, I think it's good, man. You and I, uh, we've been preaching this for years now. Since the day Dry Patch J was adopted, we knew it was mutually exclusive, and that's what we've trained to. But uh, we can't get to everybody. So obviously, the pricing department is getting some feedback from the carrier side to clarify when and when it's not. And it's not all the carriers to blame, right? You and I are getting requests uh, from uh, getinsights.org saying Drive Patch J should be added to everything. Well, we know that that's categorically not the intended use. So uh, we're just gonna have to clarify this one. I, I, I empathetically understand why yeah. everyone's confused about that, but I think there's very little space for confusion now with the latest updates to the additional item information. It's fair, fair. Uh, lastly, there's uh, something related to the new concrete gliding line items. Uh, these two line items here for FCV uh, floor covering vinyl and the floor covering wood, you have two add for glue down application over concrete substrate line items. And they've added to the F9 note here to explicitly say that this line item, the add for excludes concrete grinding. So because concrete grinding is a new line item, right? You and I are big on add for line items, just making sure that you know that they exist and when to use them. So uh, the GAD C is a perfect example here of, you know, the same excludes concrete grinding if, night, if needed, C item FCW grind. So right. I love it when the pricing department is putting in there, telling you exactly what's included and not excluded, right? It's not vague. And they're also pointing you in the right direction should you need the relevant or related line item to the particular grinding activity you're trying to perform. So, right. excellent. Uh, I dig it. Right? Yeah, th that was that was a, a smooth mood. Guys, don't abuse it, you restorers on this particular call. Like, don't be diamond grinding if you're not diamond grinding, for goodness sake. It was a good gesture. Use it when you need it. Uh, there's a clear connection that it's totally warranted. You guys should have no pro problem processing those new line items in a claims environment, irrespective of your program or non-program work that should zoom uh, right through. It seems totally warranted, but I encourage you to only use it when diamond grinding is actually being done. Well, I agree. Jumping back to the text wall from uh, Veris here on the East Service Center. Mm -hmm. uh, so material components were added for the new line items here. There's some equipment components that were modified uh, with new grinding line items. We've got some highlights on the green items that are also related here. Uh, and then some future changes to come ahead, but we won't jump too far into those because August will come here sooner than later and we'll have the opportunity to jump into the yields and the components and the descriptions of these new line items that'll be coming out in August. So Dude, that's- Three of those of those four are so needed. I'm pumped for next month. Yeah. It's gonna be good. I, I, yeah, I, I think there'll be some fun stuff to explore next month. Uh, and there will be a lot more to just generally uh, talk about. I know we've got some stuff that we wrote down here that we want to go check back in with the exact where with the new flashback section to get some clarification. And some yeah, of the stuff there it is. So we will definitely build that in to our agenda in early August. But today's what, like uh, the July 1st, like we are hitting it hard, I think, on the exact or maybe July 2nd. So we'll get this video. It'll be out here real shortly. Uh, and you guys will have an opportunity to explore all the July changes. So uh, in the meantime, thank you for watching. Uh, Action One Sites is here to be a steward of the priceless and generally preserve the health of the property insurance ecosystem. Um, so if you want to learn more about us as an organization and the tools and resources that we put out there for contractors to be in and carriers to be invoicing and estimating uh, fairly, accurately, and transparently, check us out at GetInsights.org. Uh, Wally, you got anything else for the people? Yeah, comment down below. Teach me something about why soda blasting is superior right? Yeah, any questions? Harrison's wheels up for the next 10 days. So I'm probably going to be the one fielding a bunch of those comments. So if you want to give Watley a hard time, bring it. Uh, I'll be there trying to field your, your questions and comments down below. Um, we'll Please. see you guys around. We're doing our best to keep these short and to the point. So hopefully we kept your attention and thanks for sticking with us through to the end. Thank you.